Okay. Yeah. I'm just grounding. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again for the Salty Witches podcast. Um, I am Mike, and I am here with Austin, who is grounding. Hi. And ground dead, I think. Um, we have some listener questions. Yes, let's, we do. Let's get through these. I understand you have how many? I have at least two. Oh, okay. That's okay. I thought, I thought we had more than that. Um, but they are novels, as per usual. That's okay. I, we had this conversation, and I, I told you I like the I like the extra information. I like the context um, because I think it helps us provide better answers. So okay. Hey guys, first off, I want to tell you thank you for the awesome podcast. I have learned a lot and have most definitely applied your suggestions into my craft. Did they mean to send this to us? Yes. Oh, okay. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I'm asking for some advice and your professional opinion. I want to I want to and need to banish someone for good. This person has fucked up my life and turned it around. Their actions have led me to not be as confident in myself. I have learned my lesson and I do not trust anyone anymore to the fullest. I have been doing shadow work and am healing. This happened over a year ago and I want to move from the betrayal for good. I want this person to move far, far away from me and my family and never look back again. I was considering cursing this person and still kind of want to add it to the banishing spell. But with time, I mainly want this person to go as far away as possible and for this person to get what it deserves. I have Belladonna Seeds and Hydron the Conquer to bend the person's will and it moves far away. I'm also thinking of making a uh, puppet and stuffing it with ammonia, nails, chili pepper, etc. And once done, I was thinking of putting the puppet uh, in a box with some dead spiders that I'll gather from around the house and taping the box really, really good and throwing it in the dirtiest dumpster I can find far away from my home. I know it'll take time to fully heal, but I do believe that sometimes the best way to heal is to take revenge and move on. What other things would you guys add to this or remove? Thanks for taking the time to listen to me. From the Revenge Bitch. I can get behind that. Revenge bitches unite. Um, so you have a couple of things going on here. because And it was fun. I was giggling a little bit as you were reading that because it was like, I want to curse this person. Well, actually, as time has passed, I really just want them to go away. I want to curse this person. You know, uh, and I like I like the spell that they have have kind of brought together for this on how to handle this. Like, I love some of the, the, the pieces there. Um, some of the stuff they've got going on there is really interesting. It almost sounds like... Um, this person is like they've learned they've learned things that i would say would fall, fall kind of under the practices of say like maybe like brujeria okay like they've got some things like ammonia for one like ammonia mm-hmm. like i was like yeah you know, really you really don't see that too commonly used in a lot of practices except for mm-hmm. some of the mesoamerican or south american practices well and conjuring really um hard. yeah but even then i think it's mm-hmm. a fairly new addition to those 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 practices and it doesn't matter i was just like thinking like this is this is really kind of interesting how they've they've put this together and i could, could recognize some of the cultural pieces there um i love that i love that stuff um but i think it's probably good for this listener i think it's probably good for you to really to figure out what it is you really want here um because you're you're wanting a little bit of revenge and nothing wrong with that if this person has that coming that's great. We are fully in supportive of your baneful magic. Um, but you you kind of, in the way that you're reading that that question out with the, some of the story there, like they seem a little conflicted. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think being able to, to fully get in touch with the anger and the hurt, ideally with the process of being able to work through it and, and this kind of spell work being a component of that would be good. Or maybe maybe take the lighter route and actually don't worry about a curse and actually maybe just do something just to banish this person yeah the only reason i'm going there is i feel based on the way that they kind of explain the story that they're going to go to all this trouble they're going to do this curse and then a week after they're going to be like i feel bad now okay and they're they're going to have made all that effort and and curse curse negated okay um I think a banishment is just fine because when you banish someone or something, you're just banishing them. You're not necessarily banishing them to a particular place. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could banish them to, you know, a hellhole that you're aware of. Um, Arizona. Yeah. Florida. Florida. Oh, God. We just lost all of our listeners in Arizona and Florida. Um, But but I would say don't necessarily worry about doing the curse if you're going to do a banishment. 
um, or work a banishment into the curse or something like that. However, I am going to say um, there are some things that I would remove from this as just someone who knows the spirit of the plant very well. Hydra on the Conquer Root is not baneful and is not used for banishment work. Um, not even in Conjuring Root work. In Conjuring Root work, uh, Hydra on the Conquer Root is used to conquer obstacles, to overcome things, and it's not necessarily a domination herb or domination root either. Um, Cause the only way it bends someone to your will is by giving you more power to exert yourself. So they could still work with their so hydron, but still it wouldn't be a hydron. component of the curse. It would yeah. be something they would do for themselves. Yeah, it'd be something you'd do for your, yourself. Um, if you were gonna use herbs for bending someone to your will, I'd say use calamus or licorice root. Licorice root has a tendency to make people really bend very, very well. Uh, combine that with some calamus, licorice, and clove. You got it covered. I would throw some Damiana in there as well because it's very good at helping. <sighs> Damiana is very good at making sure that whoever it is you're working against is less likely to figure out that you're working against them. Oh, yes. Poppy seed kind of Yeah, poppy seed is a good one for that as well. Like It kind of like it, it just tips them just a little bit off kilter so that like if they are suspicious like they know that they've made an enemy in you mm -hmm. and that you're somebody who has this kind of skill like it makes it harder for them to kind of figure out like did you do this you mm -hmm. know like yeah it kind of it's supposed to kind of cloud the mind yeah you know um yeah <laughs> if you're gonna make a poppet of them what i would suggest is also putting it upside down in something so that their world kind of t is turned upside down so you, you have options. You have options. Yeah. I, I think if you're looking for someone to tell you, yes, this is justified, only you can tell yourself that, um, whether or not you feel this is justified. But I personally am just getting the feeling like it's probably best if you just banish and move on because you can do all the banishments and all the cursings in the world and that's still not going to heal your hurt mm. you are the person who has to come to terms with that and you are well, the person well, they, they said they'd been doing some work around that good so let's not you know let's not blame the well, victim i'm not here. blaming them but i'm saying like you are still going to be the person at the end of the day who has to who has to deal with the ramifications of what this other individual has done to you mm -hmm. and sometimes those things last for a very long time and they're not just going to go away because you cast a spell Word. As a matter of fact, it could probably bring things up to the surface. So just think about it. If you really have some concerns, get a reading. But other than that, what you're doing sounds really, really good. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Thumbs up for the thumb, yeah. thumbs up for what you got going on. With I would spell. say try and I throw mean, some live spiders in there because because that'll add some insanity and then they'll die. Extra extra credit if you can get them into the head of the poppet, which yes. is something that, that I know another Wicked Old Witch used to do. Um, and it worked. It works. It works very well. Um, you can also make the poppet out of meat, like make a like a ground meat poppet, um, and, and then feed it to dogs, and then feed it to dogs. Um, poppet work is just so fun. It is. It's just so fun. It's good for like fun. It, it's good for healing and positive things though too. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw that out there because I think of people, a lot of people, when they hear poppet, or you know, like the ugh, god awful voodoo doll. That we hear in a lot of contemporary Pinterest witchcraft. Um, they're not voodoo dolls, y'all. Um, but I think when a lot of people hear or they see information around like poppet work, they immediately go kind of like, oh, evil. And it's mm. like, no. No, you can use the no. poppet for you healing. You can use poppets for all kinds of good it's stuff. Protection, yeah. money. Yeah. You can make a poppet of yourself and use it as a scapegoat. Hmm? I have that poppet of you. Right. You do. I do. And sometimes like when I'm home by myself in the afternoon and you're here working in the store, I'll take the poppet and I went to a toy store and I got like um like a, a dollhouse and it has like miniature cleaning stuff. Like it has a little vacuum and a little mop and stuff and little dishes. And I'll take the poppet and I'll put it in the dollhouse and I'll be like hold like the little vacuum in its hand. I'm like, Yes, Austin. Yes, Austin. And then I'll wash the dishes and yeah. And then the next day that you have a day off, I come home and the house is immaculate. It's so weird. It's so weird. You had another listener question. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a long one. Damn. Yes. We should probably break this up. 
into like pieces because this this is a lot. Okay. This is like this is a witchcraft question from like Tolstoy. Okay. Hello, my name is. I think they told me not to use it. Don't use don't use their name. Okay. Hello, my name is Cass. If y'all end up reading this on the podcast, I don't mind if you use my name. Oh, never mind. They said we could use your name. So you're Cass now. Okay. But if it's easier, you can just call me Cass. Honestly, as someone who is still just beginning to explore their path, I have so many questions, but I'll keep it one, keep it to one, possibly multi-part question for now. Oof. Okay. Just some background about me, just in case that's helpful. I will try and do this without spilling my whole life story. I grew up in a fundamental Christian household. Uh, 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 sorry. What? I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian household, which started in Seventh Day Adventism and somehow ended up in charismatic slash Pentecostal. If you've ever heard of a church in Redding, California called Bethel, that's the kind of Pentecostal I'm talking about. Ironically, hmm. I think that church and its beliefs are why I moved into magic and spiritualism rather than just landing on atheism. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that would make sense. Anyway, I started my deconstruction right in the middle of the pandemic. This happened for a few reasons. One was because I was finally out of my parents' house and in a space where my family wasn't constantly pushing their beliefs and expectations on me. Two, because of some amazing creators on TikTok, huge cliche, I know, who brought to light some really interesting historical facts about the origins, ancient cultures, and the progressions of pantheons and the syncretism that happened over time of Abrahamic religion that churches did not talk about. Some research and several mental breakdowns later, and here I am exploring spirituality, magic, and polytheism. I tell you all this because one of my biggest roadblocks thus far has been relearning to hear and trust my intuition. In the Christianity that I've experienced, we are taught the intuitive voice in our minds is either the Holy Spirit guiding you or the devil tempting you. It stripped away my sense of agency and ability to trust my inner knowing. I spent a long time taking every thought captive... That's interesting. Uh, That I still struggle to differentiate between intuitive thought and imagination. I'll get thought like you should do this. And I'll wonder, was that my intuition or an actual good idea? Or is this my imagination just throwing stuff out there because the idea feels fun or whimsical or magical? Obviously, I still have a long way to go and it's been a bumpy ride, but I've started some small practices like pulling a tarot card every day uh, for practice and learning purposes, reminding myself to be intentional in the way I talk about myself to myself and grounding at least once a day. Okay, can we, can we pause right there? Because yes. this is a lot. Okay, so the first thing I want to say to kind of address that piece, and they may, they may come back to this later on, but if they don't, I want to make sure I don't forget this. Okay. From a purely spiritual perspective your intuition and your imagination are in essence kind of the same thing. Like you don't really need to distinguish those things when it comes from, uh, you know, when you're looking for the root or the the course or cause for uh, an inspiration of some kind, whether it's intuition or imagination, to be honest, really doesn't matter because those components of your being really kind of weave together really for most of us pretty intensely. The only time that that would ever, I think, be a problem would be if you were dealing with some very particular kinds of mental health issues. Um, you know, I'm talking primarily like serious, like you're not just imaginative, you're like delusional, like that, that, that would maybe be potentially an issue. Um, but, um, you know, I'm going to assume that it's not the case here for this listener. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so you're, you're beating yourself up and you're, 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 you're kind of picking at things there that you really probably don't need to. Yeah. Sorry. Please, please go. Okay. On. I love the mini episode you did on grounding. Sitting down and following along with that was the first time I'd ever felt a tangible result from trying to do, trying to do anything that was grounding. I love the results so much that I've basically memorized the process so I can do it on my own and use it when I have breaks or time in the morning. And every time I get to the part where I'm sitting in the energy for a minute, I feel like my nerve endings are buzzing. It almost feels like touching a live electric fence that is set super low so it doesn't jolt you. It just feels buzzy. Is that normal? If so, that's so cool. Also, when I'm done, I feel much more in my body and much less disassociated from my body, and my body feels lighter, like the feeling you get when you've been carrying something heavy for a long time, um, and it feels normal. Then you set it down, and suddenly everything feels feather light. 
It's just such a refreshing, refreshing feeling. I was hoping you might have some advice on simplifying that process for when I'm at work and on the move to still get the reset and relief. I found I'll be working and get anxious in my head um, and about something and I'll either retreat and disassociate or get irritable and snappy. Either way, I need to reset, but I can't go sit for 20 minutes and do the do that every time. I feel di- dysregulated. I've tried the physical thing you suggest at the beginning of the mini episode for folks who have a hard time visualizing, but it just doesn't feel the same. Any advice would be lovely. Again, I love your podcast. I found it as di- I found it as a direct result of asking Lord Lucifer for a hint to finding accurate information about them. When I first started researching them, I'd read in one place that Lucifer was the Roman name for a deity associated with Venus, but everywhere else I looked, it was the Christianized stories, demonology, and at one point, some convoluted esoteric theory about aliens. I wish I was joking. Anyway... <laughs> I'm so grateful yeah. for the nudge uh, because as salty as you guys can be, you give solid advice for real people and that's not always a, that's not always a given in witchy online spaces. Thank you for all you do and I hope you all have a great week. Okay. So I love that. You give like I'm I'm gonna use that now. We give real advice to real people. And we give or, or real information for real people, and we give fake information to fake people. Oh, I still give real information to fake people, and they just don't like me afterwards. Well, I'm not entirely sure what a fake person is. Uh, reptiles. Reptilians. Reptilians. What, anyway, what? so... This is the lizard people episode, right? Yes. Oh, God. Ashley. Oh, spoilers. Spoilers. So... They, we actually have one of them. They decided to move the mothership around from the dark side of the moon and join us today via satellite. Um, so, yes, we will have reptilians. Ver- vertical blinks and all... Go get on the pyramid. on the video cast yes everyone put their pyramid hats on yes we need to make sure that we're safe um i'm sorry please finish this listeners. <laughs> so um grounding can be something that takes a while but it sounds like you've listened to the episode a lot and you pretty much have it memorized so you you should be pretty much conditioned almost at this point depending on how often you've, you've listened to it and done it um that all it's going to take is five minutes and a couple of big deep breaths and refocusing that connection because once you've made that connection multiple times it's not like your you know because i remember i used branches and roots in that it's not like your branches and roots just go away um i would say whilst you're moving or driving probably don't do it unless you're at a stoplight maybe and even then probably pull over just to make sure that you're like not at risk of danger obviously um so so really you should be good um my waking the witch students are assigned grounding centering and aligning three times a day basically for the entire duration of the course is this person one of your students um no but the reason i'm saying this is because it gets to a point with my students where all i have to do is go okay now we're gonna we're gonna open up and you can feel the energy in the room automatically shift. You can feel the energy get grounded and you can feel everyone start to open up and do their thing. Everyone moves at different paces. And so if you need to take a little bit of extra time, cool. But if you need to go a little bit faster because you just don't have the time to sit and have a 20 minute meditation break, that's fine too. Take five minutes, go to the bathroom, take a big deep breath, allow yourself to, to, to just release. I thought you were going to say something else. Sorry. Go to the bathroom, take a big deep... Ooh. I mean, to be fair, you could just go into the bathroom at work and allow yourself to just take a nice pee. A nice That's tr- any, pee. Anything that you can do that you would associate with kind of like your baser body function mm-hmm. fu- functions. Or allowing is, yourself to release something. Yeah, is like actually really pretty grounding. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know... And that's going to help kind of, one, physically remove your body of the toxins and, and debris that you've built up. And if you do that as... Weird as this is going to sound, uh, if you piss with intention, you will allow yourself to also theoretically ground and clear your energy at the same time. Piss with intention? Yes. Do it for America! Like you haven't pissed with intention. I. Yes. See? We are literally sitting in a place where several of us pissed with intention at. This chair? No. What are we talking about? The shop. Who's pissing with intention at the shop? Before we owned it. What? What? Before we owned the shop. Did you, you pee on this building? You, me, and Chris all came over here and we were like, ours. 
And then it became ours. I do recall that now, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We can now we can learn I, a lot from animals. I peed on it and licked it. Now it is mine. Yep. Wait, sorry, I licked it I licked it and then I peed on it. Sorry, I just want to be really clear. I did not pee on it and then lick it. Not in that order. Not in that order. Did we answer that question? I think we did, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I have a question. Okay. I've not just been uh, being rude over here on my phone too much. Um, I have a question. All right. Uh, Okay. So again, a little bit of a little bit of backstory. Okay. So I live on on land where a house burnt down and now there's a trailer where the house was. They read online that a tragedy like this can bring spirits to the land. Uh, In their back room, they feel as if they are not alone, as if something is watching them. It doesn't scare them. They're just wondering if it's something that, uh, or if it's something maybe they should consider giving offering to. Um, They feel that it's kind of like a dense and thick presence. Um, And it could be nothing to do with the house burning, uh, but based on what um, she, indication here is that she, though she does believe it could have something to do with the people that lived there before. Um, Anyway, so they are looking for some tips on how maybe we could could help them with this. Um, so I'm I'm gonna say like the first piece of that as far as something like a house fire bringing spirits to that area. I don't think that that to be honest probably wouldn't be as likely. Um, you know, well, spirits are already going to be in that area. Exactly. Yeah, and that, that's really kind of where I was going with that. It's like like really everywhere we are, there are always spirits around. Um, and so it's likely that the the spirits maybe if if this is the situation where you're you're now connecting with spirit a spirit there that spirit was probably there when the house that was before or, or that was there before was existing. Um, You know, and it could be maybe a spirit connected to the land. You know, there could be a lot going on. You know, I think the only exception to that would really be if there were some other sort of like really tragic, like if there was maybe a death or something like some other sort of really tragic. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, like a house burning down and somebody losing their home. That's a tragic thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But but I don't know that that would be enough to attract the a kind of the kind of spirit that would kind of then remain within that space, mm-hmm. right? Any spirit that I think would be drawn to that would most likely have left that area with the prior family, um, you know, for good or for bad. So I'm feeling maybe it's like an, maybe just a land spirit. Yeah, it's probably maybe. just a land spirit. Um, what I would say is I'd address it directly in a very respectful manner. You know, I know you're there. I can feel you. I'm very aware of you. I'm not here to to cause any disrupt. You know, you're more than welcome to stay as long as you're going to allow yourself to behave. You know, you respect my boundaries. I'll respect yours as best as possible. And if we need to come to an arrangement of <clears throat> offerings or something like that, then we can most definitely do that. Okay. I'm glad you touched upon that because, because what's your initial instinct like as of right now? Do not give it an offering. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of leaning in the same way. Yeah, no. Open uh, open yourself to, like, communication with it. You know, grab a candle or something and just kind of, like, open up and say, Hey, I know you're there. I can feel you. You don't scare me. I don't want you to scare me. And I wouldn't want us to live copacetically with each other. Like, I'd, I'd love for us to just kind of, like, hang out and be chill. Yeah. So here are my rules and my boundaries. Please respect them. And you let me know if I can respect yours. And that's usually enough to do it. I mean, I would say there's probably going to be a little bit more of a process around that, allowing yourself to ground, become aware, stuff like that. Because a lot of people are like, well, I've lit the candle and I said the things. I'm like, you probably lit it, ramble it off like you were trying to be the fastest reader in the world and then snuff the candle out immediately. You didn't Mm -hmm. open. You you need to have a a dialogue. There's a process. Yeah. You need to have a dialogue with it the way you would a normal human being, Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. I think it's interesting when people ask questions about giving offerings to spirits like this situation because mm-hmm. I think there's um, there's a lot of superstition out there around. Well, if I it's like when you feed a stray, right? You're like, mm-hmm. oh, now I don't ever leave, right? Um, sometimes and, with spirits, it's true. And that, yeah, and I was just gonna say, and with spirits, sometimes that is true. When you give them a gift, when you give them an offering of some sort, they are inclined to see that as an invitation of sorts. Uh, but. I think a lot of people take it a bit further and they get superstitious with that. They're like, oh, I, I gave it an offering and now it won't leave and it's evil. And it's like, no, no, there, you have to be really careful about that. You know, and I would say one step further, one additional tip for this listener. Um, 
viewer, Saltine, um, would be, I think they're a viewer because they messaged us through uh, YouTube. Um, one one extra like tip would probably be to maybe do some sort of divinatory work to see if you can actually figure out what this spirit is. You know, um, and if you're not quite sure how to do that for yourself, like maybe see if you can find a reputable psychic in the area mm -hmm. or a medium in the area, maybe who would be willing to communicate with the spirit for you. Yeah, um, I mean, if need be, if you if you if you feel like you can trust us, I can do I can I can connect far away, and I'm the medium in the shop now, so I could king in and see what's going on and give you some information, pull some cards on it, and hopefully give you some answers. When you do your psychic work, do you like do one of these like? things sometimes okay all right okay sometimes i will just yes you've got to touch your forehead so that the whoever it is that's watching knows something's happening i just do those when my head hurts so, yeah me too like oh god all right okay uh that was it Okay. That was that was like for listener questions. Cool. Awesome. So Austin, what is our topic tonight? Tonight we are going to talk about cleansing, clearing, and rewarding. Okay. So first, I want to get something very, very clear. Um, cleansing and clearing are different. I see what you did there. Okay. Um, cleansing is just like you would wash your clothes. Um, they're not new. You know, unless you went and bought new clothes, it's like your favorite shirt. You're gonna wash your favorite shirt, get the grubbies off of it, and it's gonna be clean and it's gonna be fresh and it's gonna it's gonna be taken care of. Clearing is um, taking that fabric down to its base level and then reconstructing it. Okay, um, so cleansing is a huge topic in the witchcraft community, in the spiritual community, in the pagan community, just because there's a whole lot of fear that's pushed around if there's a spirit you have to cleanse it you have to clear it out and it's like really most of, most of the time you shouldn't do yeah because if it's a spirit it's there for one of two reasons it's there because it likes you and it's probably trying to help you you know mm -hmm. why get rid of it too if it's there and it wants to harm you now you've probably done some bullshit white person cleansing process and now it's pissed off yeah and now it's really going to make yeah. trouble for and, you and the and the problem with that is is when you approach any form of magic from a position of fear which the idea of i have to clean this jar before i use it in a spell or i have to cleanse this candle that I bought from the local metaphysical shop because I need to use it in a spell or I need to cleanse the bell that's used for cleansing before I use it for cleansing. Do you cleanse your selenite before you use it to cleanse? I have known people who will actively take their selenite and run it through a cleansing smoke. That's like taking a shower before you take a bath. I always bleach my bleach before I use the bleach. Exactly. You know, and so so as much as I understand the necessity for spiritual and psychic hygiene, there is a point where it's just too much. Everyone thinks that you need to learn how to cleanse and protect first before you do any other form of magic. And I very much disagree with that because most of the time, if you're keeping yourself grounded, centered, aligned and you're actually doing the energetic work you're claiming to do that means you should be open to your spirits enough that they're taking care of the muck and all you have to do is maintenance now that's not to say that if you're working at a professional level or in a professional capacity for other people like we do that you never have to cleanse i that that is incorrect as a matter of fact, you, that's when you do need to cleanse because then that's going to help keep you much more clear and focused on what you need to be doing. Um, there are so many different cleansing methods, but the biggest cleansing method is these things. Smoke cleansing. Yes, not smudging. Smudging is a sacred ceremonial practice used by indigenous Americans and indigenous peoples to mark a space for a particular spirit, a particular ceremony, or a particular thing. This is not a smudge wand or a smudge bundle. This is a rosemary bundle. Okay, let's not let's not go too far into this, but I also want to just say real quick, like if you are the countless people that we see in the spiritual community today who feel that you have an access to the term smudging and the ritual processes that belong to those groups because your grandmother was a Cherokee princess. Um, you need to shut the fuck up and sit down because yeah, your grandmother was not a Cherokee princess. Cherokee is 
Um, and even if your mother was a Cherokee princess, that sure as hell doesn't mean that you are. So you still need to take a huge seat. Mm-hmm. Um, no, do and, go on. And this is a juniper bundle. These are both great and lovely alternatives to the very, very common. I told you we're not going to go there. Salvia, Don't even say it. Don't even al- say it. Al- 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 alpina or al- white alpina. sage. Alpina. Alpina. Salvia alpina um, or white sage. Um, We've talked about white sage on the podcast before, and Lots. I'm going to try and make sure that I don't go into my 10-minute soapbox. Um, but if you are not someone who is a part of the Southwest Indigenous Tribes, guess what? That's not for you. I don't care if it grows in your backyard and you live in Arizona. Not for you. Okay? Um, anyway, moving on from that. <clears throat> I think that's a symptom of people just really not having an, an association or connection to their culture. I yeah. think it's that, and I also think it's Typically. people unwilling to actually just do some research and read a fucking book. Well, and I think also so much of it is like the commercialism of spirituality. Yeah. You know, if you look well, at spiritual, like you've got the new age community that's been pushing sage at people for like the last like 30 years. You know, and so it's just become one of these things that you like, it's familiar, you mm-hmm. know, like you go into a store, you see a sage bundle and, you're, and everybody knows, I know exactly what that is. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and they want it because they've been told that it'll do these things mm-hmm. when really it doesn't do those things at all. Mm-mm. You know, and then they come into a store like us and they ask for white sage and we smack them. And I feel really bad about that. I feel really bad about that sometimes. Yeah. They call the police, the police show up. But then as soon as we explain to the police officer what's happened, the police are like, yeah, they should have smacked you. You are a spiritual colonizer. Get in the back of the car. But we don't smack you. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, we don't even carry that at, at Cat and Cauldron, and we've had people complain about it because. Sorry. And and I just want I just want everyone to listen to this very quickly. It's my it's my stop working now setting on my phone. Yeah, it, it's doing me a lot of good right now while we record the podcast for the shop. Go go, go on. So. I'm trying. I am medicated right now. I cannot. I have to stay on track. Oh, this was like me and my mother yesterday. <laughs> my mother. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, let me she, finish. She watches these now. Oh, God. Sorry, Mom. Um, she, my mother was, I would say, um, the expression violently too high is appropriate, I think. <laughs> she, she dosed herself by accident yesterday. And I keep saying that people are like, what? By accident? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you take an edible by accident? Um, and she took an edible thinking that, sorry, mom. Um, but our viewers and listeners will get a kick out of this. Um, she took an edible and she didn't realize, she thought it was a CBD gummy. Yes. She did not realize that it actually also had THC in it. The Delta 9. And she took the whole gummy when the recommended dosage is half. So she got like 15 milligrams of THC. Yeah, this is a woman who gets um, loopy on one Tylenol PM. Yeah, and so, and she... Sorry, mom, love you. And she was really struggling. She was a little freaked out. And I feel like an asshole, and she's going to she's gonna watch this episode now and, and learn this, but sh- I go upstairs on my way out of the house to come to the store, and she's like, I did this today, and I'm really, really high, and I'm uncomfortable, and, like, I can't even get up and walk. She's like, I'm worried I'm going to get up and walk, and I'm going to lose my balance or get dizzy, and I'm going to fall and, like, bang my head on something. You know, and she's, like, going down one of those those tunnels that you go down when you're, you know, too high, right? Um, And uh, she's telling me this, and I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to be sympathetic, and in my brain, I'm like, I really can't handle this right now because I'm also violently too high. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're uh, we're a complicated little family. I love um, our family so much. So you were saying you can't remember now. Can I you? can't remember. Thank you. No, I do. Um, so so rosemary and juniper are awesome alternatives, and I want everyone to listen to this. We have people who come in and ask for the white sage, and we I give them my spill. I and, had that conversation just, today. and I'm very violent about it, and I shouldn't be but I, I, I'm just so sick of it. Um, but we've actually had people complain that they want us to carry the white sage because it burns better than the rosemary. And that is the most privileged... And that's not even true. It, no. Yeah, it's that is the most privileged 
thing I've ever heard. Well, I just don't like the rosemary. Like, it did its job, but it was really hard to keep lit and super inconvenienced me. So you need to carry the white sage bundles because they stay lit better. I'm sorry that you've been inconvenienced by having to actually learn how to appropriately burn a bundle of herbs. Um, let me give you my sympathies. But you have to so hard. It is hard. It's hard work. Um, so, so rosemary is great for purification and protection. It is not a substitute for every goddamn herb. It is not. We also have this. We do have this. I'll let you talk about that. Why? Um, I'll let you talk about that because you have. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to. A non-high brain. That's going to be able to give better information about the ethics around. Palo okay, Santo. so let's. Okay. I'm still talking about juniper. Thank you. Okay, we'll wrap it up. So juniper is great for purification. It likes to ground things and it also helps transition energies. And it has a lovely smell. Okay, so the problem that people run into with these kinds of herb bundles is they're wound so tightly that it's hard to keep them lit. So I always tell people go ahead and snip snip the little strings and burn it sprig by sprig. Or keep it in its package, and before you open it, press down and roll for a minute. Okay, roll it just like that. It's going to break up some of the herb in the middle, and you're going to be able to get a better burn. Okay, so now Mike is going to talk to you about Palo Santo. Oh, well, thank you. You're That's welcome. Thank you. Um, really quick on Juniper. Really quick on Juniper. Um, in our area of the world... Um, and again, this is something that's going to bring into uh, attention to the practices of the indigenous community here in the uh, in the, the North in North America. Um, juniper uh, is very often widely distributed here as sacred cedar, mm -hmm. um, much like white sage. Unless you are indigen an indigenous person, please do not use sacred cedar. Um, it is juniper, indeed, but uh, but I believe sacred cedar, as it is cultivated or harvested in a particular way by indigenous communities, I think there is um, there's a different process to how they do that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to distinguish that. Buy your juniper, but don't buy your sacred cedar. Okay, it's not so much about the distinction of the herb because there really isn't one a lot of the time. Um, it's more about you know like really who's cultivating it, who's harvesting it, and with what intent or purpose. Yeah. Um, yeah, just another tidbit that people don't really sometimes know. All right, Palo Santo. So Palo Santo is um, another fun, burnable herb for smoke cleansing. Um, and Palo Santo, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about Palo Santo. Um, there is a movement kind of for a few years now going around about how we need to kind of move Palo Santo in the direction that we did with White Sage, right? Where mm -hmm. we want to be more culturally aware. We want to be more sensitive to different spiritual practices based on, again, different countries, different cultures, traditions, and things. Um, but a lot of that information has not been really carefully researched, as these people are kind of putting that argument out there. Um, there are, if I remember correctly, like over a dozen different kinds of trees that are technically sold or harvested and, and marketed and sold as Palo Santo, mm -hmm. um, which basically just means holy wood, right? Um, so there is a, a very particular process of to harvest Palo Santo. It's actually quite fascinating. If you guys ever wanted to, to do any research, go and Google how they harvest Palo Santo wood. Um, it's pretty interesting, but um, but there is at this point no uh, real like the, this is not closed, like this is not a closed thing, um, you know. So yeah, for that reason, you talk to a lot of people in Latin America too, which is where it's really commonly used, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people depending on the area of Latin America, and, and of course, for and of course, their personal spiritual practice. A lot of them they don't use this for anything spiritual. Like for them, this is like bug repellent. Yeah, they burn it to get rid of bugs. Um, so so yeah, I, I don't know. So if you've heard. Anything along those lines about Palo Santo, like not being able to use Palo Santo, like they, no, you're you're okay. But also, um, you know, if you if you'd feel more comfortable not using Palo Santo, then cool, mm -hmm. pick up an alternative. Well, let's let's talk about alternatives because people always go to the smoke cleansing, mm -hmm. which is also from the perspective of witchcraft and occultism, kind of not right and i guess what i mean by that is that when you smoke cleanse a space pretty much regardless of tradition or culture when you're smoke cleansing a space because we all know on a purely just physical chemical level smoke doesn't cleanse anything smoke makes shit dirty 
right? Um, but, okay, uh, what you're really doing when you do smoke cleansing is you are marking a space so that it will then be named for and hold a particular energy. Mm -hmm. Um, which is one of the reasons why you can't just burn one of these bad boys and just, ah, all better. You have to charge that shit with intent. You need to say your prayers. You need to call in your ancestors. You need to do other things because all this is doing is showing the world and the universe and anything else that might be paying attention to what you're doing in your practice, teeny tiny ant like human, um, that this space has now been marked for these kinds of energies. And I speak these kinds of energies into being now within this space. Right. So smoke cleansing is, I'm going to tell you, it's been hyped and it is traditional. Absolutely. But um, unless you adhere to particular traditions, step away from your burnable herbs. Why inhale all that shit if you don't need to? Right. Some of us really enjoy fire. I uh, yeah, it's not about the fire it's me. and it's not about burning things. I, like I, if I I'm the problem, it's me. I'm right there with you. If I could recount on the podcast all of the things and people I have burned over the years, I would be very happy. But we're not here for that tonight. Let's talk about other things. Well, would you please discuss this because you make delicious things here well, in the Thank store. you. I'll Don't drink this. this. Don't drink this. I'll discuss this. Um Incense is also very commonly used, and that's also in the realm of smoke cleansing. Mm -hmm. um, this is the sacred space incense that I make here for the shop. We have over we have thirty varieties of incense, and sometimes more depending on if I have a wild hair on my ass. <laughs> um, but the sacred space incense the incense doesn't the incense doesn't smell like a wild hair up your ass, does it? I don't know. You tell me. No. Oh, good. Yay. So the Sacred Space Incense is a blend of botanicals uh, and herbs and herbal components that I've compacted and put together um, to mark a space. It can be used to um, to cleanse, but you still have to do the work. So if you're just burning an incense like this, um, I've spelled it and I've charged it. So it's going to mark the space as sacred, um, but you're going to be the one who has to speak what is sacred and what is allowed in there. Um, the difference between... A lot of incense that are marketed nowadays and mine is that I charge these things. I'm not just making them smell good. I try to make them smell as good as I can and burn really clean and stuff. But the thing is, is I spell these to do what they're supposed to do. Whereas if you're just going and you're getting just dragon's blood fragrance oiled incense from Walmart, you're not even getting the real dragon's blood. You're getting... It's chemicals. Y yeah, you're getting caca, and it's gross. Um, dragon poop. Yes, dragon poop. You're getting it's dragon not dragon's poop. blood. It's dragon's poop. Yes, you're getting dragon poop. Um, so incense are really great for that. But understand that even when you're utilizing incense, not all incense are made the same, and not all incense do things. You know, just because you are getting an incense and it's and it's your favorite incense and you use it to waft into your little witch's bottle. If that incense is something like cinnamon and clove and you're doing a baneful oil jar, jar, jar or something like that, probably not the best thing to mark that jar with. Especially if you're just like, and I'm cleansing my jar. You're marking the jar to be clean. So, so just be aware of that yeah. in your own practice. Um, and incense are lovely, and I love making them. Anyway, so the next thing that we're going to talk about for cleansing. Um, okay, really quickly. Um, water. Waters. I was going to grab a couple of other examples. I grabbed the Florida water. Okay. But, um, well, it's okay. We, we don't, I, mean, I don't think we need the visuals at this point, but we've got holy water. We've got spiritual colognes mm -hmm. that are a lot of the time, you know, there's a lot of water. Water, right? We, we bathe in water. Right. Ooh, all the, all of the things. Okay. So we have. What do we have here? Oh, this is very exciting. We have. Oh, more Florida water. So this is the shops. This is uh, war water. I'm not oh. going to be cleansing with that. Yeah, you don't cleanse with war water. Do not this cleanse is, with war water. Um. Yes. I just grabbed bottles. Holy water. All the bottles. Okay. So this is. It's all. It's all just Florida water, but it's like different batches of Florida water, and um. Yes, and this is the spiritual clone made by uh that witchy dude yes, slash ritual folk. Like ritual folk, yeah. So, uh, which is really good stuff. Um. Anyway, but we we bathe in water. We use water to clean so many in other in a so many in other ways. So many in other ways. In so many other ways. Excuse me. Um. Why are people like 
I don't, I've never understood why people are like, like why they're not including waters and washes more consistently in their spiritual work you for, know, for cleansing. You know, I don't get it either. Um, actually, one of my favorite cleansing rituals to do is the kernips ritual. Kermit? Really good. Kernips. I, I think it, I like the Kermit ritual better. The Kermit ritual? Yeah. Pro cool, pro cool, asking, pro funny, seed me he fast, I'll de da loki. I banish the profane, the unwanted, and the unworthy. I speak only truth and shall be heard. Oh, Kermit. I can't do it, Miss Piggy. Sorry. I was oh, gonna, Kermit. I was going to try to do Miss Piggy. I'm um, sorry. So, anyway. Hey, um, Frank Oz water. is Frank Oz is spinning in his grave somewhere. <laughs> okay. So, um, but water is so great, um, and it can be used for lots of things. Not moon water. No I'm kidding. Moon water doesn't really have, other than just the fact that it's water, it really doesn't have any like spiritually cleansing properties. Yeah, it, it, it amplifies. The moon doesn't. Well, I, it also kind of depends on the phase of the moon. It depends on the phase of the moon, and I've never been one to think that the full moon cleanses, and part of that is because if the full moon cleansed, we wouldn't have haunted houses. Right? That's the first thing you see in every horror movie, is there's like a big, full, like, blood moon or some shit, right? And, and that activity is amped up as fuck! Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. Um, so, so, if you're How using... Come on. If you're using waters, particularly spiritual clones or spiritual waters in your practice, there are so many different ways to use them. One of the ways you can use them on yourself um, is as needed. Some people will take these and put them in like a, a like a spray bottle mm. and do a little boop, boop, boop. Ah, it burns. You are unclean. Um, you know. But um, in the shop, I actually usually have a bottle of Florida water underneath the counter so I can show it to people. You'll take it, and you'll just rub it in your hands, and you'll go through your hair, down your arms, down your chest yes. and belly. Yes, if you're a man, do your crotch. If for no other reason, then it'll probably smell better. But also, it's a good way to keep things clean and unanchored to the lower self. Anyway, um, so spiritual waters are really great for that because waters are always used to wash in a lot of different cultures and a lot of different practices. And so because of that, um, utilizing your waters and your spiritual cleanse are really great. You can blend them. Um, oh, well, you can take like a cap full of this and just put it in like a normal bath. Yeah. And Or you can add that to regular water and you can do uh, like actual washing. Yeah, like a floor wash home. around your home. Yeah. Um, surface cleaners yeah there you go yeah. um and the, my florida water is my great grandmother's recipe um so there's a little bit of her in every bottle just, just a little, little pinch bit. just a little pinch little of great ashes. grandma in every bottle and i've not gone through all of her ashes yet so it's good um no there's no there's no grandma in every bottle um there's no nona um so this is a really great alternative no, people love mind. this um one of the things that i really enjoy about florida water is it can be used to feed your spirits it's not mm -hmm. just used for cleansing um you can use it to feed mojos gris gris uh curios it's great to wipe down your altar with when you're doing a cleanse mm -hmm. um most florida waters are going to be antibacterial and antimicrobial anyway just because a lot of their bases are alcoholic um mine does have some alcohol in it but it's not enough to start a fire anymore um i was doing i was doing an crossing and I had the candle and I surrounded it with Florida water like I normally do and I dropped the match like I normally do and it went up in flames and I was like, cleansing fire. Um, and then I was like, I think I put too much alcohol in that batch of Florida water. Anyway, so the Murray and Landmans or the Landman and Kemp's that you can find pretty much anywhere, I think you can even find a Walmart, mm -hmm. doesn't really have a spiritual charge to it in the sense that it's been charged personally by a practitioner, but it does have a charge to it due to the egregore of that particular... Yes, um, it's egregoric, because yeah. there's nobody in the factory where they make that shit that's praying over that exactly. water. Exactly. So an egregore is a... It is a group thought form that has a lot of power given to it by a large group of people. Yes, that, yes. Putting it very, putting it very simply. Yes. Yes. Um, but since we're talking about egregores, uh, let's talk about the uh, inclusion of holy water in witchcraft. I because love I think a lot of people witchcraft. hesitate to pick this up at a witchcraft shop, and this stuff, to be honest, works just as well or can as the Florida water. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because of the faith of the person who created it. So it doesn't matter if you believe in the holy water. 
Mm. No, because the faith of the person who created it. Yeah. yeah, Someone else created that. And the faith of the person who created that is going to hold a lot of the power behind it. Mm -hmm. It will hold more power if you have faith in it. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, the cool thing about holy water is, is it functions through a process of contagion. And so you can take a couple of drops of holy water and put it in a big bucket and that thing's going to last you for a while. Yeah, because then that whole bucket is holy water. Yeah. You let it yeah. sit for a couple minutes and it becomes holy water. My favorite thing to do with holy water is mm-hmm. all, because I'll use holy water in my pulizias. Um, Bless you. Um, a pulizia is the traditional Italian form of egg cleansing. Um, and I'll put it in the water that I'll use to to read the egg and everything. And within a few minutes of it being put in the water, the water turns into like this like McDonald's Sprite looking stuff. It's really cool. The the Florida water or the or the excuse me, the holy water is really good. Um, I understand that uh, the fonts at Catholic churches are um, not, silver, not good places to get Florida water or holy. I keep doing that holy water from. That's where I used to get mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, not not because the water isn't holy anymore, just because apparently there were a lot of like cryptosporidium outbreaks. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, um, a couple of years back, and I guess that still is kind of a thing that can happen. Yeah, because basically anybody's dipping their fingers in that water. Yeah, but also at a lot of churches, they'll actually have like a Ooh. container. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Everything's ruined. Damn it, Mike! Um, they'll have like a container where you can actually go up and like open up like a spigot and put it in a thing, yeah. and that's water that's usually been blessed by the priest prior to the prior to the ceremonies and stuff. So um, and he comes out and he does like a yeah. Yes, Daddy. All right, I like that. Let's. Um, we've talked a bit about cleansing, and before we drag this episode on too much longer, let's talk about a little bit about clearing because you started okay. to explain that, or I should say a little more about clearing because you started to explain that earlier. And I think sometimes again the terminology gets weird. Mm-hmm. That when we're cleansing something, we're basically taking it back down to kind of its pristine state. Yes, right? it's kind of the idea. Like we're returning it to its ideal state of being. Right. When we're clearing something, it really is probably better to think of clearing more kind of in the concept of a banishing. Mm -hmm. Right. Where we're like, no, no, you just don't get to be here anymore. Right. Um, And there are, again, a number of ways that you can clear or banish something. What are what are maybe just like one or two like for say like beginner level or, or, or user friendly oh. ways to do a clearing. I was literally now please don't get fancy right right now. I was literally gonna be like lesser banishing ritual the pentagram. Well and that's Boom. and that's a good one if you like that. I'm not one that it's into the Solomonic crap, but you know, whatever. Um the Solomonic craft, is that what you said? That's what I said. Yes, crafts. Craft. Easy ways to banish things, quite honestly, are to hype up your own internal witch fire and witch mm-hmm. flame and expand it outwards while claiming your space. Yeah. Um, borderline, arrogant, prideful, ego-driven. Get the fuck out! Step into your 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 inner alpha ness. WWF wrestler. Yes, talk. exactly. Channel Step your into- channel channel your inner Andrew Tate. Channel your inner Austin and Mike. Be be like. Big time alpha dork loser, who I think is still sitting in a Romanian prison. He should be. Dude should fucking rot in there forever. Yeah. Huh? I didn't hear what you said. Andrew Tate. He's terrible. Yeah. Ugh. God. Right. Got that. Anyway, I'm just trying to think of like, who do I know that's got like that like big time, like, like this is kind of the person you want to become when you do this. But yeah, basically, like like you said, just kind of like just very domineering, like my space, my rules kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, what's another way that they could clear? Go ahead. I've been talking a lot. Yes, you have. Um, one thing I found really helpful over the years to like clear or banish is to actually do some pr- other prep work to um, remove things in the house that are really kind of the tethers or the roots for the funky energy. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean like shitty roommates, Mm -hmm. um, toxic members of your family. Mm -hmm. Um, Who knows? Who knows? Right. Maybe you've just got a cat with a really bad attitude, you know, just get rid of all that. That gift from your ex Um, that just sits there and stares at you. Exactly. Yes. The Ikea shelf. And you know, you put it together wrong. Every time you look at it, you're like, like, when I was done, I had three screws left. So I know that fucker's going to collapse and it's Ikea. So it's going to collapse anyway. But 
maybe sooner, right? Because you missed those three screws. Anyway, so I find it's also very helpful along the lines of working with the mundane and the magical. Like you can go through your house and you can cleanse and clear and cleanse and clear and cleanse and clear. But if the source of the trouble in that house is you have, who knows? Seriously, like you've got like like a shitty roommate we see that one a lot here at the store. Mm-hmm. You've got a really shitty roommate who is just just they're just a horrible human being and they're and they're bad and they eat all your food in the fridge. Bastards. You know, and they just do all those things that horrible roommates do. It's just kind of like right? more more and more. If like you're a cat. if you're clearing or, or cleansing all the time, but you're not making an effort to remove that person from your life or your living space, like you're wasting your your waters and your and your herbs and shit. Like yeah. you're literally so, just keeping things under control. Exactly. So um yeah, so I, I think that that's another thing that I was trying to get at. I was like, you know, like Sometimes just asserting very mundane boundaries in your life can be a really effective way to clear and cleanse. Yes, it is. Um, you know, let's let's not let's not spiritually bypass that shit. Um, let's talk about warding because I think warding is really confusing for a lot of people. Yes, I'm burp talking. That's I think okay. warding I is, and I don't know why. Um, I think it's very confusing for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I would I would agree with that. Um, warding has come to to be this huge thing, um, and wards are important. Yeah, but there's just like there are just so many creators and individuals out there who just they have warded the shit out of their house and they're still getting attacked and i'm like well i think shouldn't your wards be taking care of that i I think i think there are two things happening there i think that one when they make a ward they like sit and they like wrap red cord around a rowan branch Rowan tree is very protective. Rowan wood is very protective, um, as is the color red. So they'll sit and they'll wrap like a red cord around a rowan branch, which is like an old folk mm-hmm. talisman. Um, it's legit. I didn't just pull that out of the, out of nowhere. Um, but while they're doing that, they're just basically just like going through the motions. They're like, I'm just wrapping string around a stick. Ward. Um, and it's like, you didn't pray over that. You didn't charge that in any way. You did not acknowledge the animistic spirit of the rowan. You did not put any thought into why you bothered to fucking work with red red string, right? You didn't really put any power into that. So you, you just made, saw it and was you like, made this a is thing. A good idea. You made a thing, but you didn't really make a warding item or an amulet or talisman of, of some sort, right? So I think that's one of the things that happens. And mm-hmm. the other one that happens, I think, is a lot of times people are so focused on how all the ills in their life are coming from external sources. So they're warding their houses like to the nines to try to protect and prevent and keep away and Mm -hmm. keep away and keep away. And you're the problem. Like you're the problem, Um, you know? And so, and you really can't make wards against yourself. Right. I wonder if that's why people do, who do a lot of warding also get to a point where they start to feel uncomfortable in that space. Mm. Yeah. Either uncomfortable in that that space, um, uncomfortable in that space, or they start to, yeah, Yeah, that where they've, they're, they're like thoroughly convinced someone is still attacking them because their magic just stops working. And it's like, you've locked it all into a box. Yeah. And it's just there. And so it's all floating and flinging and flying around you. Yeah. Or so if you're warding your house, to try to get rid of negativity. I guess easy thing, easy, you know, bottom line is make sure you're not the source of the negativity. Truth. Um, and that can be hard. That can be hard because none of us want to claim that. But if you can claim I'm the it, negativity. Um, it's okay, baby. I'm also the negativity. But really, we're talking about the biggest source of negativity. It's going to be Toby. <sighs> Worst cat. Worst cat in the world. That's the noise he makes every morning. All right. So and warding though. Okay. So let's let's talk about effective warding though, because again, I think that this is a conversation that or this is a, a witchcraft practice that confuses a lot of people. Like they hear about it, they try to do it, try to do it, um, but they also find a lot of the time that that ward doesn't really work. It doesn't do what it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. So how how would you advise someone maybe to make a very like just a very simple and very effective ward? Get some wind chimes. Okay. Get some wind chimes. They don't have to be in a particular. Yes, I was going to. I was. I thought for a minute it's gonger wasn't going to work. It's gonger. It's clapper. It's clap. The bell has the clap. No, you have the clap. Um, Oh, God, I have the the clap. Um, Um, So, so 
bells, wind chimes, anything like that are going to be really, really good. Because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to get those bells or those wind chimes. And you're not necessarily going to need to cleanse them, but you could do something to help mark them or awaken them. So you could sprinkle them with a little bit of Florida water to help kind of like invigorate them. Um, and all while you're doing this, you're praying to those spirits, you know, this, and you have to give it an intention and purpose of like, as it's already been done. Every single time you ring, negative energy is, is banished and pushed off my property as sound moves throughout this space, da, 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 you, you know, you attract your, your shininess attracts negative energies and spirits and you trap them and use it to empower my prosperity with every ring of your bell. Something like that. You have to focus like that. And it can't just be half ass, half ass. Like I just did it. It needs to take a good few minutes to do that well you got to raise power you, you have to raise power, power. and that's the, a lot of the reasons why a lot of people's spells either don't work or are not consistent is because you're not raising power raising power isn't just sitting there and focusing your intention silently while you do deep breathing well while you're raising power um i'm I, I'm I'm a chaos magician and I love to work with sigils. Are you feeling my power? Yeah. And when I am feeling your power. I'm, I'm smelling your power. Good God. Um, I I'm for breakfast. feeling, yeah, you had a burrito for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the breakfast burrito you had this morning was really good. I was like, oh, I should have gotten one of those. But then I would be here and you'd be smelling my power. Um, <laughs> so I like to work with sigils. Yeah, chaos magic is, uh, sigils are kind of a big thing. And they've kind of moved out into lots of other practices. And it's not mm -hmm. to say that they began or you know, got their start in chaos magic because they certainly did not. But but they're, uh, but I like to, like, in past, as I've made warding things, particularly out of bells, because if you think about this, think about this for a moment, right? We mm -hmm. like to try to... We, we like to try to bring scientific, or we should, we should try to bring scientific principle mm -hmm. into our witchcraft practice, right? Because there's kind of an idea, at least in a lot of by a lot of witchcraft practitioners, that what a lot of what we do as witches is really, in essence, kind of just science that hasn't really been confirmed yet, right? So it's good to incorporate these things because somewhere down the line when science gets good, gets good, Science is good. What's when good science? It continues to grow What's and good? expand. Science. We'll get to a point where we'll be like, oh, all this shit that we used to call witchcraft, yeah, it's all just science, right? Like, we've already seen that happen historically, right? Um, anyway, so, but I'll take a bell. I'm holding a bell, those of you who are not watching but listening. I'm holding a bell. Um, and I will actually just paint a sigil on the bell. Okay. And I, like, I have taken the time. I've crafted the sigil. I've charged the sigil. So for me, that sigil is like, boom, like you're my, you're my sigil for this thing now. Right. And mm -hmm. the sigil, sigil would be specific. Like, it'll be like, this is a sigil for protection. This is a sigil for good energy. This is a sigil for whatever. Um, and that'll be on the bell. And the idea is then because I've charged it as such, right. As I've made that, cause in essence, at that point you've made it, you've made a magical tool, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, you, every time I ring the bell, that vibration moves through that sigil, which will then be on that move through the space. And this is where I mentioned bringing science in, right? When we introduce sound to a particular space, as the vibration and the energy of that sound moves to that space, on at least a temporary basis, everything in that space is changed, mm -hmm. right? Um, as the sound ver reverberates, right? The same is true of light, mm -hmm. okay? Which is one of the other things I wanted to get to. I have a candle here, right? A lot of people don't think about using something as simple as a candle. Hmm? That's a candle. candle. This is a candle. Is, is this a candle? It's a candle? It's a candle. It's a big candle. I don't think I can handle this It's candle. a big girl candle. That's a big girl candle. I don't That's think I can. We don't I'm, use, we don't not, use, I'm not, I'm not we don't girl. use baby candles. I just, we I use just, big girl candles. I'm just going to say right now, I, I do not have the real estate for this candle. But... A lot of people love their candle magic, but when it comes to doing working, like cleansing, clearing, and and warding, they completely overlook something. Yeah, like they this. go automatically too. You know, and it's like, and again, looking at the way that science science kinds of works, right? It works right. If you go take a lit candle, any source of light, particularly one like where you've charged this candle with intent, 
you've like carved cool stuff into the wax and have like put cool oils and things on this. Don't get the wick, it won't burn. Okay, but you put cool oils and things on this, right? And who knows what else, right? And you've got your, your intent and your incantation, your prayer, whatever the hell you're doing, right? You light this and you go through, and this is something I like to do actually, is I will go through the house and I will turn off all the lights in the house. And I'll go into each room as I navigate the house with a lit candle. And I'll go into each space and I'll say my my whatever it is that I'm saying. Like, like you know, like I bring light. Only light can, can you know, uh, the light is a manifestation or a representation of my intent for protection, for safety, for myself and those who live in the house, right? Whatever, in your own words, right? And I'll go through and as you go into a dark room and the light of the flame actually moves out and fills that space. Once again, you are altering the energy in that space. Mm -hmm. Light is is light is the thing that travels and moves through space. We we know that scientifically. So you are altering the energy of that space by bringing or introducing light into that space, and that's also a really cool kind of a psychological kind of thing, right? Because then you're like, I'm bringing light to darkness. I'm illuminating what I could not see before, mm -hmm. right? And as I go through each room with my candle, I'll go through. I'll say what I need to do, and then as I walk out of the room, I'll flip the light on. In the room. So by the time when I started, the house was completely dark. By the time I'm done, every light in the house is on. And this is why I always have $400 electric bills. That's true. Um, but obviously you go back through and you turn them all off real quick, right? But anyway, but that, that's kind of a way that you can do some very effective um, clearing mm -hmm. or cleansing, right? And now, as a, as a ward, how would you incorporate candle work into something like a ward? So you would do the same process. You would, I, I would carve the, um, carve a sigil of protection or an incantation protection onto the candle. Um, I would anoint it with a protection oil or a blessed olive oil. And then I would choose some plant allies that are really, really good for that. Like um, what? I, for protection, I like to use, uh, no. Oh? Nettle. Nettle. Oh, yes. Stinging like nettle. To, yes, I like to use nettle. I like to use, um, rue. Rue is really great for that. Um, Although and, Rue has different associations and different cultures. Yes, it does. Because um, I'll use Rue for cleansing or protection. It's just a matter of how I work with that spirit. And I'll usually stick to three herbs. Three is a good number. But if I'm doing protection, I'll usually do four or five. Um, just because four helps to stabilize. Five is also a number associated with it's for like Mars. Dynamic kind and of energy. Like, like I'm going to punch you in the face. Making things happen. Um, so let's just say we're doing protection. So we're going to do Rose. Mary, Rue, Nettle. I'm thinking really hard right now, and That's I don't okay. know why. Um, hyssop? Hyssop is pretty it's much not, just It's not protective, but it's cleansing. Yeah. yeah. Um, hyssop, and then I'd probably throw some uh, Detora in there, because Detora is protective. Um, and mm. I'd grind those into a powder. And I would not use salt. And the reason I would not use salt is because salt neutralizes everything. Unless salt you, is not protective. Unless you've exercised the spirit appropriately. Um, now, if we're going to use do a cleansing, then I have a, a really good one for that, too. Um, but anoint the candle, get the herbs on there, blah, 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 blah. And I like to do a really cool thing where I'll wrap my candles in aluminum foil. Um, and then I'll put them in the air fryer. On the lowest temperature. Is that where the food always tastes like that? They're wrapped. The wax is not leaking out. Um, and I'll put them on the lowest temperature for like... Sticks. Yeah. For like five minutes, six minutes. Um, and then let them cool. I'll kind of press the herbs in. And then at the end of that, everything's kind of stuck into there. So as it burns, um, and I've lit that candle and I speak the incantation and I move it through my home because I'll move it through each room in the house. Um, sometimes if I want to around the, the perimeter of the house, um, the spirit of those herbs and the spirit of the oil and the power of that sigil combined with the heat from the air fryer um, will be released out into the out into the area mm -hmm. and transmuted to weave into the intricate structures of energy around the home. Very nice. If I were going to do something for cleansing, I would take a black candle. Um, I would anoint it with olive oil. I After I've inscribed what I'm protecting from on it or what I'm trying to release or whatever. Um, and then I would surround it in black salt or salt. Doesn't really matter because what's happening is as I charge it, negative energies and mal negative and malicious energies are attracted to this, this flame like a moth is attracted to light. As they hit this boundary of salt, they are neutralized and banished. Very nice. 
sometimes the flames on those photos will get really, really high if I'm doing that. Yeah. And some Sabrina the Teenage Witch bullshit. Hmm. Okay. Alternatively, I do a black candle with some sulfur. i be careful with sulfur. Yes, sulfur is it's, flammable. It's, it's combustible. Yes. And it's not very... It does not... It's a bad smell. Yes. It smells like uh, the power it's that you were raising a moment ago. Oh, my God. I didn't even fart. <laughs> I can smell your power. Um, that makes it sound like you have a body odor kink. What? That makes it sound like you have a body odor kink. smells. I don't have any kinks. Oh, as we learn from American Dad, everyone has a kink. Um... Have we have we discussed these things enough this evening, do you think? One thing that we have not talked about oh, yes, is the oil. oil. Oils are really, really great. I have that down primarily for just like as another warding item. Oh, well, I mean, okay, cool. So oils are really, really great. Um, they're condition oils. And the reason we call them condition oils is because they are used to physically mark something with a particular condition. Um, you mean I'm not conditioning my hair? You can with some of them, depending on what the base oil components are. I would suggest not doing it, though, because it's probably going to make your hair look gross. Anyway, so the uncrossing oil is just an example of that. Um, within a condition oil for uncrossing or protection, you might find some certain things. Um, depending on the base oil but essentially what you're doing is you're you will physically mark yourself or an object with that oil and the idea is by marking it not only are you imbuing and impregnating that object with the spirits that are have been decocted and infused into that oil with your prayers and your magic you're also um i forgot where i was going this because i heard the door the, it will also take on those those capabilities. There we go. Oh, that was really you did. Good. You saved it. I you did. Saved it. Um, and so the cool thing with a lot of oils that I like to do is for protection. I'll actually take a protection oil and drop protective sigils on things where the oil's not actually going to harm it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do it actually on mirrors. Um, if I have, I've had clients before who um, really like have like those really old silver antique mirrors. That are real oh, silver. That are, that are apparently doorways to hell, all of them. Yes. Of course, if you uh, listen to TikTok. But these things do pick up a, a, a fucking charge. And sometimes spirits like to go through and move through them. Um, I had a client one time and I watched the mirror move and do weird shit. And I was like, that's weird. Okay. And so I took it and I pulled everything that was out of that mirror and trapped it in something else. Took it home with me. It became my friend. Um, and then I sealed that mirror utilizing a particular blend of oils that I have and let it sit for a minute, went through, checked everything else in the house, made sure everyone was good. And then afterwards wiped it down with some Florida water because the alcohol from the Florida water will emulsify the oils. Science and witchcraft living together harmoniously in one. Well done. So oils are really great for that. You could anoint a bell with a particular oil. Absolutely. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to kind of re-anoint though. Like each time you're gonna use the bell, you'd yeah. like put put some fresh oil on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could anoint your altar, your windowsills, so many things. You can anoint yourself if you want to. You can anoint yourself with a protection oil. Be, be careful. The oil isn't going to burn your skin. Yes. Always do a skin test. Um, one of our readers actually uses my road opener oil to not hit green uh, not hit red lights. Oh. Work. That's an interesting use. Hashtag um, slay. I love to see people. What do they say? Everybody's so creative. Everybody's um, so creative. Couldn't you theoretically anoint a bell to be manful? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Every single time I ring this bell, your head splits in two. With each ring, thrice, 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 evil comes to you. You would probably want to, in that situation, you would probably want to have some other sort of tag lock or witness item for the person to receive the effect. Sure. So that would be a good use for something like that. Like if you had a poppet of that person. And or, you just lay that poppet down and like just like chimed that bell right over the poppet's little head. Like every time you hear this, every time I ring this bell, you know. Um, or you could attach their signature to the inside of the bell. And just let the clapper just beat the shit out of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, so those are some great ways to do it. There are a lot of people who like to ward with crystals. Um, which is going to segue me into my upcoming class this Friday. So I've talked. I've I've talked a lot this episode. I feel like, and I think, yeah, I've talked a lot. That's okay. I'll just sit over here and be quiet. Um, but 
This Friday, I have a class called Crystal Magic. Um, it's $20 a person. It is available online. Um, it's available in person. There's still some spots left. Call the shop, 801-601-1795. You can get registered. We'll get you taken care of. It is, again, available online. No, I am not recording it. It is available online. It is available online. You just have to call the shop and register. How do you call the shop and register? I just gave you the number. 801-601-1795 or go to the website www.catcauldron.com and you'll be able to see all of our upcoming classes, all the services we have to offer and everything else there. But you cannot register for our classes there. You still have to call and talk to a person. I know it's scary. I get it. I hate people too, but this is the day we live in. You need to pick up the phone and call 801-601-1795. Anyway, so in that class, I'm going to be talking about how to work with crystals. And a lot of people like to put tourmaline and, and selenite above their door and because it keeps negative energies out. Yet these are also the same people who come in and always have negative energies in their home. I'm like, why are those things not working? Anywho, so part of it's because you don't know how to program your stone. You're putting it out in the moonlight to do the work for you and you're not actually doing any of the work. So in this class, we're gonna be talking about programming stones, grids, some other things, ethics and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, do that. Do not take selenite and carve it on the concrete. Yeah, you're just wasting your selenite. You're wasting your point. selenite and at that um, point, you're also going to it be inhaling selenite gypsum. Test. Yeah. Also, you, you could be leaving like lovely sharp little selenite needles all over the ground for some small child to come and walk over. Or or a puppy. Exactly. Or a puppy. And I'll be honest right now, if a child steps on those selenite needles, they not a all tear. The cleansing they need. But if a puppy does it, oh, my heart. Do it's not. True. No. Absolutely not. Think of the puppies. I will, the puppies. I will. I will. I will. Oh, God, you down. I will hunt you down and I will smack that selenite out of your hand. He will John Wick you. Uh, yeah. 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 That seems like that, that was more violent than I meant to go. For. But anyway, so I do have a class coming up on that. We have a few other classes coming up. You you have happening um, just a few days later, the full moon rites on August 30th. Yes, on August 30th, we have a full moon rite. The full moon rites It's a here. Wednesday. It's a 8 Wednesday. 8 p.m. because we like to do those once the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. um, the full moon rites here at Cat and Cauldron are always going to be more ecstatic. I'm never going to turn someone away if they can't afford it. It's most definitely more donation-based. There is a $10 donation suggestion. But if you can't swing it and you want to come out and you want to experience a full moon rite, and gets get your witch on that's this is the place to do it um don't ask me how or what we're gonna do i just know that there's gonna be fire and there's gonna be loud noises and sweat and sweat dress appropriately sweat um we have a whole bunch of stuff coming up in september um yes we are already almost in september <sighs> which is like wow this year kind of flew by really fast and it's been kind of a shit year i'll be honest um for me um, but also pumpkin spice lattes, uh, basic Slap witch, yeah, yes, exactly, yeah. It's not so much the pumpkin spice lattes, but it's like it's just like I'm I'm really ready for a fall. I was thinking about this earlier. I was thinking like fall's kind of like the most magical time of year for me because yeah. it's like 100%. it's cool enough so that you can like start dressing more like a witch, yeah. you know, because. I run around in tank tops and or tank tank tops and shorts during the summer because I have to because it's unbearably hot where we live. Um, but I really do prefer like cardigans and like cool witchy clothing and long coats and things. So, yeah. so I'm excited for that. Are we done? Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank. Oh. oh. So, so why don't Why don't you you take us out, Austin? I talked enough. I brought us in. You take us out. Take me out. Okay. Thank you for listening to and watching the Salty Witches podcast. We really appreciate all of you saltines out there. If you have not liked us, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, there we go. I'm still getting used to it. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe button yet, go ahead and do that. If you have any what questions. What are you even doing with your life if you haven't liked or subscribed to our podcast? Um, if you haven't, if you live in Utah or you're making your way through Utah and you want to stop by Cat and Cauldron, 
we're here. You can find all the information online. We do classes, we do rituals, we do readings, we do custom spell candles, custom mojos, custom uh, we, we do a whole bunch of stuff. We do a lot of free education as well. Um, I actually am thinking I might be speaking with someone about doing a, I'm going to teach you how to do a Kernips thing and posting that on our YouTube. So stay tuned for that. Um, other than that, have a lovely evening, have a lovely morning, whatever you're doing right now. And remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy witching.